it if it breaks out of the cabin so it doesn't seek revenge. I don't want this shitty horror movie to have a sequel. Realize this makes sense, and not just because Bill's acting as if we're in a horror movie. Inhuman shrieks and something slamming repeatedly against the walls of the cabin continue for a good 20 minutes before falling silent. The girls get out of the van and join us as we watch the cabin burn to the ground. The heat from the fire is barely tolerable, and we're standing 30 feet away. The cabin finally collapses and everyone but Bill gets in the van. He stands there watching it burn, holding his rifle like he still expects some monster to come charging out of the roaring inferno. I know for a fact he's going to be bragging to the entire campus about how he single-handedly slew a monster when we get back. Finally, the cabin has burnt to the point that it's just a crackling, smoldering pile of charcoal and ashes, not even a dim orange glow visible in the darkness. Bill stretches his limbs, then gets in the van and tells Steve to drive into the town so we can get gas and breakfast. We arrive in a town of maybe 400 people an hour later, and stop at a combination gas station slash diner. As we walk in, Bill jokingly comments that if we were really in a horror movie, he'd have at least earned a blowjob from the heroine. Rachel grabs him by the head and pulls him into the back of the diner slash gas station. We don't see them again until after we've ordered breakfast and our food has arrived. I only have Bill's word for this, but he claims she pulled him into the bathroom and blew him on the spot. They've been going out ever since, for almost two years now. Steve told his uncle that the cabin burned down because the chimney for the wood stove got clogged or something and caught fire. His uncle doesn't care since it was a shitty cabin he built in a single weekend and is just glad we're all okay and didn't burn the woods down. We've never gone back there, but Steve's uncle has gone camping there several times since, mostly during hunting season, and hasn't seen or heard anything odd. Other than the skeletal remains of a deer torn in half next to what's left of the cabin, that is. Bill is the only one of us crazy enough to go camping. A, you murder one creepy monster in a fire, you sort of lose any fear you had of the woods at night. Speak for yourself, you nut job. And that's my creepy skinwalker slash fleshgate slash wendigo slash whatever the hell it is story. I have no idea if we actually killed it or not, and I'm not poking around in the burnt remains of that cabin to find out. I don't know what to think. This happened to me a couple hours ago and now that I'm calm, I'm on slash b slash because that's where I like telling people my stories, okay. And yeah I know I'm probably stupid for picking up strangers in my car but I figured small girl equals not dangerous. So it was about 1.30 am and I was leaving my girlfriend's house. She lives north of town so kind of rural but not out in the sticks or anything. Houses are spaced probably half a mile apart. Here it goes. Driving home early morning hours. Most of my driving I do really late so I'm not too spooked by the dark countryside. Windows open, blaring music from my phone through my aux cable because I'm a dick. I text while drive because fuck you. Phone is at 10%. Drive maybe 5 minutes and suddenly phone dies so music shuts off. Look up and I see some movement in the road. Slam on brakes. Looks like animals in the road. Two huge and I mean huge fucking dogs in the road tearing something apart. I mean, these dogs had to be at least three and a half feet just standing on all fours. Their backs came up to my car window. I get closer and they just ignore me. Roll up windows, lock doors, because of course dogs can open doors. Honk my horn. The dogs stop, just stare at me. Fucking blood dripping off of their mouths. Honk again. They don't flinch or anything. Maybe a minute. Two minutes of them just staring at me, they suddenly sprint off. What the fuck was that um? Slowly roll forward, around the animal they were eating. Wait another couple minutes trying to see what it is from the car, can't tell. Get out with my flashlight. Anxiously approach corpse with my knife out because obviously I could kill two huge dogs with a 4 inch blade. I'm not a farm kid or a country kid but it looks like a horse or a cow. 
Holy fuck these dogs seriously killed this big thing. It's completely stripped of skin, but the disturbing part is its eyes. Still intact still bright and not clouded, and fucking scared looking this animal was completely terrified when it died. Noises in the bushes off the side of the road. Nope.jpg. Into car I go, floor it. Swear I hear howling but probably just me being scared. Alright so naturally I was freaked out so fucking bad but another 10 minutes rolled by and I'm thinking that was actually pretty fucking cool this is a sweet fucking story to tell. Driving, music back up. Charging phone and car adapter. Phone shuts off while charging so my music stops again. There is a 4 way stop up ahead. Slow down, rolling stop. As I start to accelerate I see a person walking on the left side of the road. Young girl maybe 14 to 15 years old. Probably 4 euros. Immediately terrified. You know for me, the things that are not inherently scary are the things to fear. When my friends and I are out in the woods at night I conjure up images of women in white dresses and little kids running around in the dark. That's what's truly scary. Something that is just out of place. A young girl alone on a country road at almost 2 am is pretty damn out of place. But then I think about the dogs, and fuck I hate myself for this but I thought. She turns and looks at me and just shakes her head no. Dark brown hair, long down to her elbows. She was wearing kind of baggy clothes. Dark grey pants and a black shirt but no shoes. Hey, it's okay. What's your name? I'm so fucked ski down. I'm sweaty and shit. The girl walks up to my window and I can see tears running down her face. Fuck. Hey do you want to ride somewhere? Did someone hurt you? Fucking just shakes her head yes. She walks around to my passenger door. Gets in and just keeps crying. She is just staring straight ahead, not looking at anything. Silence silence fucking silence. So um is there somewhere you need to go? Friend? Parents or something? No response. Should I call the police? No. She said it so adamantly, and turned and stared right into me. Holy fuck okay. Her voice was really mature sounding and actually pretty cute. As far as looks she was probably a 7 or 8 out of 10 if it wasn't for the youngness and the scary circumstances. So we drive another couple of minutes, I keep asking inane questions. She starts to answer in ways other than moving her head around. Name? Garvey? Never heard it before. Age? 16. I was a bit off. Reason for tears? Wouldn't say exactly but someone hurt her arms, she showed me some gnarly bruises. Handprints and shit where she lived, down the road low thanks alright. Where to take her, just into town please. Interests, rides horses and competitions. Okay everything is getting pretty chill. Show her some of my sweet tunes, she smiles a bit for the first time in the car ride. Her talking about horses makes me think about earlier so I decide to ask her what she thinks about the dogs. When I tell her about the dogs she yelps. I react by slamming on the brakes. We're stopped in the middle of the country, a copse of trees is on either side so now it is really dark. She is blank fucking white staring at me. Where did you see them? She is practically yelling. Hey hey it's okay? What is the matter? I can't let them get far. What do you mean? This girl is frantic she is trying to get out and I grab her arm, forgetting the bruises. Don't fucking touch me she screamed and I realize I grabbed her. Like I was just trying to help this girl out and I realized that I shouldn't have grabbed her arm but when she screamed that at me she had more anger in her eyes than I have ever seen before. And yeah she was a small girl but I was more afraid of her than when I got mugged a year ago. She opens the door, gets out and I notice she has blood stains all over her. I thought it was just a design before. She yelps again, stares at me, and sprints off into the tree so fucking fast. I'm in shock just totally confused and terrified. Howling. Nope 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 this girl is going to die and I'm okay with that. Floor it. Get home. Lock doors. I live with my step bro and he isn't here for some reason. All alone. Yeah so basically I'm just sitting here in my living room freaking out about every little fucking noise outside. There was scratching at the door earlier but it was just my faggot cat. Okay so now the scratching is back. Not sure what to do considering cat is on lamp. The micro USB in my car is fucked and it only charges if you hold the cord in. So it kept falling out. I live in Illinois. I said she said her name was Garvey but I don't know how to spell it. Okay there's growling or rumbling or something but it's not storming so. Take pics? Or. My door has bars so I should be good. But fuck. 
Okay there is a dog on my porch it's just some fucking dog though it isn't the same ones but it's scratching and trying to get in. It's freaking me the fuck out though. Can I legally shoot it? Sorry camera phone I too try another but it's just sitting there. It isn't scratching or growling anymore just patiently waiting and that s worse for my mental health than it making noise Jesus. Ah, what street were you on when Garvey ran? It's like country road something but it turns into Makanda. Creepy cryptid encounters thread, doesn't have to be in the woods, but my story is. I'm going to apologize ahead of time, this is a fairly long story. Live in Wyoming won't give out any more location info. Take over dad's old cabin, refurnish it and go in the woods regularly. My whole family used to go camping together all the time, but we stopped as we got older and busy. Not me always would go out to clear my head or just for some fun. Been saving up a lot of vacation time money to have a few extra days off. Ask around, all my friends and GF are busy. Disappointed, but fuck it we can do another one some other time. Pack up my stuff and bring my German Shepherd slash nigga Baxter. It was around fall, so it was really beautiful out. Baxter's happy, I'm happy, life is good. Get to my cabin, haven't been for a few weeks so I have to restock everything, but it's actually in pretty good shape. It should be, I spent a small fortune fixing it up. Spend the rest of the day setting up, by dark I'm cooking dinner and watching TV. The X-Files, the Flukeman episode. Want to get the Halloween slash fall feel before going to bed. The next day Baxter and I are out walking the trails. Recently I had begun to walk over them and explore on my own. Dad always warned me not to stare too far, but that was when I was like 12. I'm a big boy now. We walk on, and nothing is out of the ordinary. Birds for a bit, and Baxter starts getting anxious which is weird, he's usually fine in the woods. Another 5 minutes and I find this old stone building I've never seen before. Like really old, could be early 1900s era. Some of it's still standing, but I can't figure out what it was. Either an old stone house or some type of mill. It was all overgrown and the back was collapsed. I decide the absolute smartest thing to do would be to check it out. Inside smells like really strong cat piss, also has some leaves and shit inside. Obvious signs of life are obvious. I'm smart enough to know not to fuck around in someone's living room. Me and Baxter get the hell up out of there. Unsling my M1 Garand, you can never be too safe. I keep telling myself I'm just spooking myself. Every little crunch or snap off in the woods has me on high alert. Get back to the main trail, when I hear a big as fuck snap, like someone snapping a limb off a tree. Only something very large could do that, I crouch and ready the rifle. Baxter get down with me, we sit for a few minutes. Figure we can wait it out. Completely expect